M O N D A Y S U C K S. Monday sucks. Monday sucks. Monday sucks. Monday sucks. Unless you're watching my two cents Wiss of the Week, which you are. So join me. Let's turn your Monday into a fun day. Cue that intro. What's going on, my beautiful fragrance family? I hope each and every one of you are doing amazing today, and welcome back to My Two Cents. My name is Brian, and this is the channel all about helping boost your confidence through the art of fragrance and helping you become a lasting scent memory. All right, if that intro did not put a smile on your face, well, th then I don't know what else to do. I give up. But I, I look, I understand Mondays can suck sometimes because, you know, you have a great weekend. You're, you're having so much fun. Maybe you did a little bit too much imbibing on Sunday and now it's Monday and you got to go back to work. Well, I hope that this episode today puts a smile on your face and makes your Monday that much better. And if it does, well, then my job's done. I'm this is over. I, I don't have to do anything else. Just kidding, I wouldn't leave you guys hanging like that. We got fragrances to talk about. We got some whiffing and sniffing to do. So this past week in fragrances, I decided to rock whatever the hell I want to rock. So as a fragrance reviewer, you know, when we're doing our weekly rotations, we like to, you know, set a theme. But this week, I, I didn't want to do a theme. I wanted to rock whatever the hell I wanted to rock, which is actually a very important part of fragrances and this channel. You do you. Rock whatever fragrances make you feel good. Whatever fragrances might make you feel more attractive. They might make you feel sexy. And the most important thing is, wear fragrances that help boost your confidence. So what fragrances did I rock? Well, let's find out in week number 26 of my Wiss of the Week. All right, so this past Sunday, uh, last Sunday, unfortunately, we lost an icon in the fashion industry and also in the perfume industry, and that's Terry Mugler. So in honor and in memory of Terry Mugler, I rocked Pure Havana. Terry Mugler was such an icon and will always be an icon in the fashion industry, but not only in the fashion industry, also in the perfume industry. Terry Mugler and his perfumers created DNAs, fragrance DNAs that are iconic. You can smell in every single Terry Mugler fragrance his DNA. In the Amen line, you have that beautiful gourmand DNA which is also in this. Pure Havan is incredible, and it's unfortunate that it's been discontinued. It seems that they have discontinued all the great ones from the Amen line. Pure Havan, it's simple. It's tobacco, it's honey, you got some patchouli, you got a little cacao, and this beautiful vanilla and Styrax, so it has a nice resinous base to it. I love this fragrance. I actually sold this fragrance not too long ago, and I just picked it back up. Why? Because it's that good. I missed it. I missed wearing it. There's something about the DNA in Pure Van and in every Mugler fragrance in the Amen line that gives me these feels, these beautiful feels. In my opinion, I think that Pure Havan is going to go down in the history books as being one of the best designer tobacco fragrances ever created. It's a nice long-lasting tobacco on my skin. I get moderate projection from it. And if you ever find this at a reasonable price, I definitely say it's worth a blind buy. Not only are Terry Mugler fragrances iconic, Terry Mugler himself is a true icon. So all day Monday, I was rocking Pure Van, smelling incredible. I could care less if anybody else thought so, because I did, and that's all that matters. Rest in peace, Terry Mugler. I hope that you're catching all of our wonderful whiffs in the great perfumery in the sky. Coming in on a brighter note, coming into Tuesday, I decided to rock a Mansara fragrance that I really enjoy rocking more in the spring and summer, but I decided to bust it out, and it was really cold that day. And I rocked. Mancera, Oud Blue Notes. Oud Blue Notes is fantastic. Now, I don't really get a lot of oud in this. I get way more powdery iris or oris than anything else. Now, you do have some nice citruses up top. You have this nice vanilla sweetness, a nice ambery sweetness through it, and also some nice creamy woods. This is a really interesting blue fragrance. It's not like your typical blues. There are some green aspects to it. There is a little bit of spices going on, but it's really just a nice powdery scent. Now, the oud in it might just be adding to the sweetness. It might add to that powdery characteristic and a little bit of the woodiness as it starts drying down. It's got really good projection in the first couple hours, and then it sits closer to the skin. I get good longevity out of it, and I think it's a very unique smelling blue. If you like blue fragrances, but, you know, maybe Dior Sauvage, Blue de Chanel, or even, you know, Aqua Essentiali Blue, they, they're not cutting it anymore. I would check out Aoud Blue Notes. For the price you can get Mancera fragrances, like I say 
every single time whenever I have a Mancera fragrance in an episode. They're cheap, stupid cheap. I got this 120 ml for like 70, 80 bucks. Definitely check discounters. They're popping up there all the time. I know fragrancebuy.ca has got a buttload of Manceras right now. So go check them out. There's always a link in my description. Aoud Blue Notes is a fantastic fragrance. I think it's kind of underrated. A lot of people don't talk about it. More people talk about Aoud Lemon Mint, which is a good fragrance. Don't get me wrong. I think this is a little bit better. Just a little bit. I think they're both really good fragrances. I tend to reach for this one more. So all day Tuesday, I was smelling creamy and dreamy. Rocking Aoud Blue Notes. All right, moving on to Wednesday. Hump day. And Wednesday, I busted out a fragrance that I have not worn in a while. I decided to pull out a fragrance that was thick. It's dense. I was working outside. So I wanted something that would cut through the cold. Something that was thick. And thick like a 10 weight 40 motor oil. And I rocked Nasamato Black Afghano. I love this fragrance. I think it is such a well put together fragrance. Alessandro Gutierrez did such a fantastic job with this. I mean, it's thick. I get thick, dense woods. I get this really nice spicy, smoky incense, patchouli galore, and cannabis. I think this is wonderfully put together. The musks are dark. It's a filthy fragrance, but filthy in the best way. I think this smells fantastic. And you know what? To be honest with you, I do get a lot of attention from this. I have gotten some backhanded compliments from it, but it's probably just because it's so unique. It's so interesting. It is earthy, but it's just very dense. It sticks to my skin like glue. I got some of this on my clothes and I've already washed my shirt that I wore that day and I can still smell it. But a couple sprays of this goes all day and it lasts for freaking ever. As you know, I do enjoy cannabis in my fragrances. And this is a little bit more of that smoky cannabis. You get a little bit of that skunky dankness to it but all the rest of the ingredients that are blended around that cannabis are done so well. Again, I wore whatever the hell I wanted this week, and one of those fragrances was Black Afghano. All right, now we're on to Thursday. And Thursday, I wanted to rock one of the fragrances, one of the niche fragrances that I'm gonna love rocking in 2022. And it's Raja Parfums, A Midsummer Dream. Uh, man, I mean, wh what can I say about this fragrance? Grapefruit, benzoin. Be I mean, benzoin. The benzoin in this is so freaking good. You get this really nice, almost candy grapefruit mixed along with some orange blossom. You're going to get some pink pepper. You're going to get some oak moss. I mean, this the, the note breakdown on this is like reading the freaking encyclopedia for perfume. It's crazy, but it's so stinking good. I get good longevity out of this one. And out of all of my Raja fragrances, this one, I love just a little bit more. Now, I do love all the rest of them, but there's something about a Midsummer Dream. It gives me, you know, the Terre d'Hermes Mez vibes, but not dirty. You get a little bit of dirtiness, and that's coming from the spices, which is going to be cardamom and some black pepper and, like I said, pink pepper, which is actually adding a little bit to the fruitiness. It's not as much around that dirty orange. You're getting more of a bright citrus in this. And the way that it's blended, it's superb. Again, this is not a cheap fragrance whatsoever. Though it is one of the cheaper Raja fragrances, I highly suggest getting your nose on this. Get yourself a sample, get yourself a decant, give it a test drive, and let me know what you think. So all day on Thursday, I rocked. Raja Parfums, A Midsummer Dream. So now we're on to Friday. And Friday, I was working outside yet again, and it was cold. But I wanted something fresh and spicy. I kind of woke up in that mood. So I was rummaging through my arsenal, and I came across this. And that's Authenticity Perfumes, Authenticity. Authenticity is a great signature scent, especially for the price you can get it at. 50 mLs of this is going to run you $39.99. That's ridiculous. Now, I will say, they do use quite a bit of synthetic ingredients in their fragrances. That's how they get their lasting power. But they're blended very well. And Authenticity starts out with pineapple. And I know what you're thinking. Oh my God, it's Aventus. It has a little bit of Aventus-y vibe. Just a little bit. But it goes in a completely different direction. You're going to get some nice spices blended in there. You're going to get a little bit of rosemary. And then you get a nice woody base. There's also a little bit of patchouli in here. Like I said, this is a perfect signature scent. If you like fresh, spicy, very clean fragrances with that, that don't go on that soapy side, then definitely check out Authenticity Perfumes, Authenticity. So now we're on to Saturday, and I, I wanted to start testing out a lot of these new Latafa fragrances that I just got in. If you haven't checked out my most recent haul, I'll leave a card right here for you. But uh, yeah, I decided I wanted to wear one of my new ones from Latafa. And it's Velvet Oud. Now, Velvet Oud, what can I say about it? 
It smells a lot like Tuscan leather from Tom Ford. I mean, pretty much spot on. I mean, not exactly. If anything, this is actually a little bit less medicinal. It doesn't have as much of that booger sugar opening. Now, there is some raspberry in here. I do get that nice fruity sweetness, which is actually a little less fruity than Tom Ford's Tuscan leather. But there's also some nice aromatics, some nice woods. I'm not exactly sure what the note breakdown is. I haven't looked it up. You're getting a really nice leather in here. This lasted me all day plus some. Now, projection isn't, you know, stellar. In the first hour, it's pretty good, and then it sits quite close to the skin. But if you're looking for a great alternative to Tom Ford's Tuscan Leather, Velvet Oud could be the fragrance you're looking for. I got this for like $23, I think, 21, 23 bucks. That's stinking cheap. Stupid stinking cheap. I mean, the bottle presentation is worth $21 in itself. It's a, it's a really nice fragrance, though I will say it does smell a little synthetic, which is fine. It's fine. It's blended very well. But regardless of it being a dupe, a clone, and inspired by, I was smelling fantastic rocking. Latafa, Velvet Oud. All right, moving on to the last day of the week. It's Sunday, also known as playoffs, the last day of the playoffs. But on Sunday, I did a bunch of stuff around the house, and then I went to Atlanta, well, Marietta, and I went to dinner with one of my friends, Autumn. Autumn, shout out to you. I know you're watching this. And the fragrance I decided to wear, since we were going to a really nice steakhouse, was Argos, Dane. Oh, man. I mean, the more I wear this fragrance, the more I fall head over heels for it. I still enjoy Triumph of Bacchus a little bit better. But the way that this opens, the way that it moves into the heart and goes into the full dry down is, is flawless, honestly. It is very smooth. It's smooth like butter. You start out with some bergamot Sicilian lemon. Then you roll into some nice spices and really nice woods. And then you get this really nice, sweet, yet earthy patchouli. I love it. I absolutely love this fragrance. I'm not 100% sure if uh, Argos has this restocked yet. If they do, then you definitely need to go and check out Dane. Get yourself a sample, test drive it, let me know what you think. But I'll tell you what, my friend Autumn kept complimenting me throughout dinner on our way home and saying how good I smelled. This is a sultry fragrance. It is. I get great performance out of it. It's got a beautiful sillage. And like I said, it is downright intoxicating. It's sultry. It's sexy. Whatever you want to say. Fantastic fragrance. Fresh, woody, spicy patchouli. That's it. This is it. That's it. It's great. It's unique. It's confidence boosting. And I love it. All day on Sunday, I smelt like a sultry beast. Rocking Argos Danae. All right, guys, there is another Whiffs of the Week in the history books. Let me know what you were rocking this last week. Like I ask every single week, if you catch a wild hair, leave me your entire rotation. I'm really curious to know what you were rocking last week. But that's it for me today, guys. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. If you enjoyed today's episode, do me a favor and like, comment, share, and subscribe. And always remember, you are stinking beautiful. And until next time, happy scent trails.